Welcome to Optimize Risk Management. I am Karen Muller, and I will be sharing risk management techniques to help you with your small to medium-sized business on a continuous basis. Today's topic is about assessing your risk and controls. Assessing your risk means understanding how risky your risks are and whether they are at a level that you are comfortable with. In this video, I will describe five steps that will help you conduct this process in a smart manner. They include assessing your inherent risk, identifying your controls, assessing your controls, assessing your residual risk, and then taking risk mitigation steps if needed. Follow these steps and you can be confident that you will know the state of your risk. Please note that you will need to have developed your risk matrix as well as determined your risk appetite to successfully perform these steps. If you haven't done so yet, I recommend that you do so before continuing. I have videos on how to design your risk matrix and determine your risk appetite and will leave the links to those in the comments section below. Let's get started. So you have a risk that you have identified could happen in your business and you want to make sure that you are satisfactorily protected against this risk. The first step is to assess your inherent risk. That is, understanding the extent to which this risk could negatively impact your business objectives if you did nothing to prevent the risk from occurring, nor to detect and correct the risk if it did occur. This step is sometimes overlooked because it can be challenging to take a step back and really consider the inherent risk. This is because taking protective steps to minimize losses from a risk are oftentimes performed intuitively, and not performing them may seem nonsensical. For example, let's consider a simple risk of theft. You most likely lock your doors as a protective action, and therefore, imagining not locking your door may feel like a pointless exercise. We will be identifying all of the protective steps you take for your risk later. And without knowing what your true loss exposure to this risk is, you may be at a risk of putting unnecessary controls in place to manage it. Over-controlling a risk can be just as problematic as under-controlling a risk. Use your color-coded risk matrix to conduct this assessment. Once you have considered where the risk impact and likelihood falls on your risk matrix, you will know how inherently risky the risk is. You can then compare it to where you would like it to sit on the risk matrix according to your risk appetite. If your inherent risk is within your risk appetite, you can stop here. There is no need to identify controls to reduce the likelihood or impact of the risk because you are already comfortable with the level of risk it poses for your business. However, if the risk level is outside of your risk appetite, proceed to the next step. Your controls are the protective steps you take to reduce the likelihood and or impact of this risk. This could be preventative, which serve to reduce the likelihood of the risk occurring. Some common preventative controls are training and four eye checks, for example. Controls can also be detective or corrective, which serve to reduce the impact of the risk should it occur. These could be taking out insurance or reconciling transactions to an end of day report, for example. Make a list of all the controls you have in place for this risk, the frequency of when it is performed, and who is responsible for performing the control. Then proceed to the next step to assess these controls. There are two aspects to assessing a risk control, its design and its performance. When assessing your controls, both aspects should be independently considered since the solution to improving your control environment can vary according to whether it is a design problem or a performance problem. Assess the risk of your controls first. The purpose of this exercise is to determine whether you have the right controls in place to maintain the risk within your appetite level on your risk matrix. In order to do so, you have to assume that your controls are performing as designed. That is, using the previous example, you always lock your door without exception to prevent theft. With this assumption in place, determine whether the likelihood and impact of the risk occurring is satisfactory to you. If this is not the case, you can stop your assessment now and proceed to the final step in this process, determining mitigation actions. There is no need to assess whether your controls are performing well because even if they were performed perfectly 100% of the time, the likelihood and impact of the risk occurring would still not be within your stated appetite. 
this needs to be addressed first and foremost. However, if your controls are properly designed, then assess the performance of your controls. Performance relates to whether the controls are being performed and working as intended. Do not skip this step because if your controls are not performing as intended, it's equivalent to you not having any controls in place. And by default, your risk level is the inherent risk level assessed in the first step. If this is the case, proceed to determining your mitigation actions. Otherwise, now you can document your residual risk. Your residual risk is the riskiness of the risk after taking into consideration your control environment. That is, how well your controls have been defined and whether they are being performed as intended. Take a second look at your risk impact and likelihood level from this perspective using your color-coded risk matrix. Compare this assessment to where on the risk matrix it should sit in order for it to be within your risk appetite. If it sits within your comfort zone, congratulations, your risk assessment is done. If not, proceed to the next step. If you are at this step, you have conducted your risk assessment and determined that your risk level is outside of your risk appetite. Therefore, you need to assess your possibilities to bring this risk to within your appetite. These are the options at your disposal. Tolerate the risk. After reviewing your controls for this risk, you may determine that there is not much more that you can or would like to do to lower its risk level, even though it was not within your comfort level. Therefore, you are willing to accept this risk and increase your appetite for the risk. Or you can treat the risk. With this option, you will be considering additional or new controls to put in place to lower the risk level to within appetite. Continuing from the previous example we have been using, what more can you do to protect your business from theft or ensure that you always lock your door, for example? Another option is to transfer the risk. With this option, you may determine that you may not have the resources to adequately control this risk. As a result, you could consider outsourcing the process and its associated risk to a service provider. Or perhaps you determine that you do not have the financial capacity to absorb losses from this risk and may want to consider taking out insurance to mitigate potential losses and bring the risks to within your comfort level. Or you can terminate the risk. Perhaps you have determined that none of the previous options is preferable or feasible. Therefore, you can decide to cease performing the process or activity associated with this risk. And there you have it. If you have completed the steps noted in this video, you have conducted your risk assessment and have a plan in place for assessing the risk or addressing the risk that are outside of your appetite. Well done. Was this content helpful for you? Hit the like button and subscribe to let me know. I will be sharing risk management techniques to help you with your small to medium sized business on a continuous basis. Feel free to let me know in the comment section if you have a particular risk management topic you would like us to cover. Additionally, at Optimize Risk Management, we can provide you with personalized risk management guidance if that would work better for you.